Good morning, everyone. Today's a very exciting day. <laughs> I am such a geek. Um, I am planting out the majority of my seeds today. Sadly, I can't put my mange two out yet because um, my willow bits and pieces have not arrived. Um, they, it's not that they've not arrived. They're scent at the moment, but they just haven't got to me yet, but they're not due to be at me yet. Does that make any sense whatsoever? <laughs> they've been sent and they are due to arrive on the 14th, I think. And so that is not the time now. Well, it might be. I don't know what day it is when you're watching this. But yeah, so anyway, it is, um, a, it is the most exciting day of like the sort of planting and gardening season where your tiny baby seeds that you've grown from seed um, get to go outside and um, I'm gonna place them in the beds. Obviously, I've already got some bits and bobs in there already. The weather's quite nice today as well, which makes it super lovely. And um, I'm just gonna get everything kind of going in the bed. But um, it's definitely a hair hair up day today because I can't be bothered to do it first and foremost and second of all because I'm going to be gardening I obviously don't want to have my hair all in my face so it's definitely a bun a bun day and I'm also going to do minimal makeup because I watched back my um Maldives vlog because the memories and um it was really quite nice and obviously I went out recently and when you go out it's nice to put a little bit more makeup on but generally I um, quite liked not having so much makeup on. And one of the products that I am utterly, utterly obsessed with is from Beauty Pie. I know that I've like spoken about Beauty Pie quite a lot, but this, if one, in fact, no, I can't even say that because I said that about the Japan Fusion Serum, but genuinely, I, like this is insane. I'm gonna show you it because I feel like it's one of those products that just basically does it all for me, which is brilliant. This is their Luminous Under Eye Genius Corrector. I think the Becca one, do you remember the Becca one that I loved? Obviously Becca's not around anymore and also it was pink. This is like, it looks like a concealer and I've got the light medium one because I always like a really bright under eye. I'm just gonna show you. Um, this is what I use and it's what I was using when I was in the Maldives instead of a concealer because it's a lot lighter than a concealer. I use this brush um, but it's a lot lighter than a concealer and I just kind of like pop it onto my under eye. Let me bring you in closer so you can see. But this is what I use when I wear like barely there makeup. So to just brighten up the under eye and make it more luminous and just make me look more awake. So can you see that? It's got that brightness to it. I don't have obviously awful under eye bags anyway, but generally it's just that sort of little bit of oomph and you can like apply it. You don't even need to use a brush. You can apply it with your fingers and it's kind of like a highlighter, but creates natural luminosity. So when you're going for like no makeup, like I am today, it's perfect for like highlighting and not looking cakey. So I use it to do like the end of my nose like this, really roughly, like nothing nothing too much and then where I get this like darkness because of the sun just really good for brightening the area <laughs> making it look less like a mustache and I just rub that in like that and it is probably like my favorite product aside from the Japan Fusion this is insane and I've got an offer with Beauty Pie which means that it works out and I because I feel like we're kind of similar in the sense that when I first heard about Beauty Pie, I was like, it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't often like buy one brand from, I, I, like, I usually go to online stores and buy lots of different brands. With Beauty Pie, I literally buy everything. Everything, like I've got this. This is insane. This is the Super Healthy Skin Deluxe Moisture Creme. Actually, Sasha Polari told me about this and I ordered it, but I treat my, skin on my body in the same way that I treat the skin on my face. I moisturize every single day and they, it's almost like they've taken the same approach to body care as they do skincare. So I can have like a brightening body lotion that I've got downstairs and I can play around with creams to do different things on my body. And the thing about Beauty Pie is you always know what it does. You know what it does, you know where it goes. It usually smells incredible and the formulas, like the consistencies, like they feel amazing going on your skin. I'm obsessed. I do so many orders. It's ridiculous. And I feel like once you've 
like signed up and you've done your first order, you then understand why everyone raves about Beauty Pie because it is incredible, genuinely. And what they say about it being a formula of like higher end products without the sort of middlemen markup, it's factual. They are incredible. Sorry, it is absolutely game changing. This particular one for me, like my favorite for this barely there makeup look, I'll probably pop on a little bit of bronzer and mascara and some lip balm so that I don't look like I've got foundation lips. And that will be me done for the day because genuinely, I'm gonna be outdoors all day. So it's just gonna be nice to look fresh face. I'll show you some more of my um, favorites from Beauty Pie as well throughout the video. But just because I feel like you need to do like a big order. You need to do a big order of like candles and body products and makeup and skincare and find what you like. Like treat yourself, have fun with it because it's probably like not something that you've it's probably not somewhere that you've shopped before, although you're probably all sat there like, Lydia, we know about Beauty Pie, okay? <laughs> Cute. But um, no, genuinely, it's like you do a, sh do a shop, find the scents, the formulas, the products that you love and that you would normally go for and find what works for you. Even now, I'm like, right, what am I gonna try this week? I want, I've, I've ordered um, their, I think like their whole hair care range because I wanna try their shampoo and I love it. I literally just love trying new things and it's, it's just basically everywhere now. Everywhere in my house is Beauty Pie because one of the other things I would say, I mentioned about you always know where it goes and what it like what area of the body it goes on. As someone who is dyslexic, I find this whole thing so like unstressful. You know that there are some like skincare products and you pick them up and it's like P H A blah 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 um Phyto, Ujimi Flip, and I'm like, okay, but what does it do and where does it go? With Beauty Pie, I literally know everything and it's such an easy way to shop and use products. So anyway, I'll pop a link to all of my favorite products in the description box down below if you can't wait for me to go through them. Um, these two are two of them. And the highlighter as well. I stopped using my MAC one. That one is amazing. But if you, if you use Lydia Sent Me, basically you get the whole year for £49 rather than £59, which works out at £5 a month for your subscription. So it's not a huge thing to, to sign up. And I guarantee the savings that you make when you're shopping, you will thank me later. Okay, just thank me later because you're going to be like, Lydia, why did I not do this sooner? <laughs> anyway. Mascara, bronzer, and let's get out into the garden. I've got a fresh layer of body cream on and it just gives the loveliest sheen on my skin as well. And I just feel hydrated. So my body is a temple and um, we're ready to go outside. I've got SPF on my face as well. Where is my mascara? Like, genuinely, do we just not own a mascara anymore? To be fair, I need a new mascara. It's something I should try because I've not tried the mascaras yet. Eh, voila. Natural makeup, but I don't look tired, thanks to this bad boy. Little bit on the schnoz to lift the end. This is my outfit for in the garden. I've got a shirt on from Venroy, which um, can easily be taken off if I get warm, but I'm thinking I might even end up having to put a jumper on at this rate. Um, I've got my H&M trousers, which are a kind of moss green color, which are lovely. And then this is a little shirt bando that I got from Nasty Gal ages ago. They're just good for layering, so I bought a couple of them to just shove under, because if it did get warm, I can just take it off and I've got strap free and then my favorite twilly of all time which i definitely don't wear enough this is the um it's like a wild garden twilly um i got it when i bought my green one in fact it was the the reason i bought the green bag because the lady put this beautiful twilly on it i was like oh my gosh <laughs> um, but i popped it in my bun to jazz up my very laid back hair and then i popped on some impressa perfume as well because my le potager um collection samples haven't arrived yet and I'm like oh <laughs> in we come this is the last time it's going to look like this because all of these can now well the majority of them can go out so that is what we're going to do and I'm going to have a little bit of a sort out as well get rid of the table in here have a tidy up because it so quickly 
falls into disrepair in here. <laughs> One of the things that um, I would say is that sometimes I think that things get slightly overcomplicated in gardening. And I was talking to my mother-in-law, uh, stepmother-in-law, and she was like, I literally just throw stuff in the beds and hope for the best. I don't do any like um, sewing indoors and I don't do any thinning out or pricking out or I don't know. And she always gets lovely crops and always has a lovely garden. And so that's kind of the approach that I do. Like I pop things in here to get them going. My carrots, I throw straight in the beds. Same as my spinach and rocket. And then these things I just kind of put out and I just let them do their thing. I don't necessarily make more work for myself. I'm sure there are proper ways of doing things. Um, but for me, this just works and it's, it's more fun. I personally find. I'm sure people will say that the processes are really important, but for me, I really like doing it this way. So yes, I think that some of them I will leave to potentially do a little bit more. So like my tomatoes, I'm gonna leave them in here to just do their thing a bit more and give them some more water, lots more water. <laughs> I cannot express to you how sweet it smells in here. It's the blossoms from the lemon trees. It smells absolutely glorious and hopefully today i will have enough soil left over to um pot everything up as well so i'm going to get these out and into the beds and then pot up everything so that it starts looking a little bit better in here and peep and the plants start getting the nutrients that they need look at how luscious these spinach leaves are oh my gosh <laughs> makes me so very happy. But the first thing that I am planting out is my courgettes and we have many different types of courgettes. We've got little scalloped ones, a yellow scallop, we've got um, a beautiful little scalloped green one as well and so I'm just kind of working out where in the beds that I'm gonna put them. I've got some golden zucchini which I've just put in here. I'm using my new tripod. I got this from Amazon. It is so good. has a little um, remote control as well so I can press play on it um, from afar so I can record myself. So I'm filming a little bit of a reels whilst I plant all of this out but look at it. Um, Ali is getting the first harvest of spinach. If anyone can tell me whereabouts down the stalk you're supposed to actually cut these, I'd love to know. <laughs> well, I don't know. I like it when there's not much stalk in my spinach, so. Yeah, you know. but you can cut that off in the kitchen. Right. Will it regrow from these stalks, though? No, grow new stalks. It'll grow new ones? Yeah. Oh, so maybe you should take it. Yeah, below. look, you've got all of this underneath here. It's a pro at work. Spinach snipper. Okay. Take them all, I want the whole batch. Really? Yeah, I'll get through all that. But don't you want to get some like halfway through the week so it's fresh? No. It's much I'm fresh. not hearing actually for the back end of the week. Exactly. So it should be enough. But I don't like them getting too big. It's because I take the big ones out. I know how I like my spinach. Good. Thank you. Very good. We've also popped my other trestle table out here, just temporarily. Obviously it needs to be only about that width. So I think we might be going to Soho Farmhouse tomorrow, so I may well go and check out some of the antique shops to see what they've got in terms of tables, because this is so useful. I'm already using it so much. I'm potting up all of my vines and my lemon trees because this one was struggling quite a lot. Um, I think it was getting a bit waterlogged. I need to add some more soil to it. In fact, I'm gonna do that now and I'm gonna try and get as many of them pot potted up as possible. Then I'm gonna do my strawberries and then I think I might even try and do some cucumbers as well. Well, all of the vines and lemon trees are now all potted properly. I think I probably should have done my lemon trees a bit earlier. <laughs> it's been like months since I bought them and um, I think some of them have dropped some of their leaves, which is sad, but I, I, I do see a lot of growth and a lot of blossom and they smell incredible. So um, hopefully this will help them a little bit more. I also potted up some strawberries. I got myself a lemon, which fell from this tree. And excitingly, my willow has arrived and it is absolutely perfect. I got this from Amazon. Last year I had willow obelisks. This year I wanted to do a bit more of like a sort of rustic structure where they cross over like this in a line so I'm gonna put them all in place 
and it means that I can put out my monge too which is incredibly exciting and frees up a lot of space for planting some more little seedlings. I went for two different sizes but I actually think that the 120 is the better size so hopefully I've got enough for two willow structures. As you can hear my irrigation is on, little leaky hose there <laughs> doing its job. Well, I feel like it doesn't look like I've done too much, but oh my goodness, I have been working so, so hard. I've strung up all of my mange too. All of the um, courgettes are out. Uh, I've brushed down all of the beds. I have sown some more seeds. I have cleaned the greenhouse. I've also realized that the potting table definitely needs to go on this side because I think it will ruin the view out of the greenhouse. Like this really is the, the vista that I've spoken about so many times before. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get Ali to help me move that. I've had a good old clear out. I've not planted everything out. Look at my eyes. I don't know what is wrong with my eyes, but they have been streaming and my nose is right. So maybe I've got a bit of hay fever. I've never had hay fever before, but wow, my eyes are actually ridiculous. I feel like I need some eye drops or something. What is up with my hair as well? Um, but also I have Alex coming over. We're gonna have rosé in the greenhouse. So I'm going to pop the table together, pop a, a tablecloth on, get the rosé ready. It's already chilled. Um, get some food bits and dress the table for everyone. I very much enjoyed my evening yesterday with Alex at um, the house. We ended up enjoying sunset in the greenhouse and it was just blooming lovely. I've just realised I haven't put any of my body cream onto my hands and I always do that. I do my entire body and forget to put it on the back of my hands and then I realise that I'm like... Ugh. And I'm using the Super Healthy Skin Deluxe Body Moisture Creme. It's with softening hibiscus flower oil droplets and nourishing shea butter. As I mentioned, this has the most incredible texture. And when I put it on, my skin just like soaks it up. I have also just about got enough left to put my Japan Fusion Serum on before my makeup. Luckily, I have this in stock. I bought three of them and gave one to Mr. Millen Gordon. Am I gonna get this out? It's literally, oh, I think we've done it. A few little drops of this. This for me is like the consistency that you would always want to be putting on your face. It's not sticky in any way. My skin completely soaks it all up. I know I've mentioned this particular product quite a few times, but it's the one that's like really stuck in my routine because it makes my skin feel bouncy. So when I'm using lots of like resurfacing and like retinol products, I put this on afterwards, after I've, after I've let the retinol products or the resurfacing products do its thing. And this just, my skin just soaks it all up. And in the morning I wake up, feels like baby skin and feels bouncy and beautiful and dewy. So this really is like one of the most, I've like never used anything like it. It's not like an oil. Obviously it says it's like a serum. Well, actually it says it's an elixir, but for me, this is just, it's like hydrating, but it just does everything basically. I took this with me on my trip. I took it with me on the flight because I wanted to be able to have the same effects wherever I was, especially if my skin was gonna be getting dehydrated. So just popped that on. As I mentioned, everything will be linked in the description box down below and I have my offer, which is on screen now. And basically you, you put that in and Beauty Pie is, it works out at like five pounds a month, basically your subscription. And then you're getting products that would cost like, there's one product on there that's like, a, I think it's like a vitamin C set. And um, that I think usually retails for 300 pounds, I think. And it's like, not even close to that online. So you're you're making like savings and getting amazing quality products as well. So but this is this is 110% my favorite, although I have another one that I'm going to show you tonight which 
Oh, anyway, today we are um, getting up and going to hopefully head to Soho Farmhouse. Uh, we might also stop off at some places on the way just to pick up some bits from the garden for the garden because it's just looking so beautiful out there. It's making me so happy. So I do kind of want to get on the hunt for tables and things like that for potting because I obviously have an obsession with tables. So I'm gonna get myself ready. It's gonna be hair up again today because my shampoo hasn't arrived yet. And um, it's a lovely sunny day, so I'll probably end up wearing a dress or something, which is nice. Lovely. This is my outfit for the day. Ali and I are gonna have a lovely lunch at Farmhouse. So um, I thought I'd wear a nice dress because today is the perfect day for it when it's this sunny outside. And I've got my new um, mini Kelly and I'm gonna pop my twilly in my hair again because I loved that when we were away. And it just makes what is essentially a I've not bothered trying hairdo and makes it look a little bit more elevated and smart so I'm going to put that in my hair and um, then I've got my Manolo Blahnik uh, little flats on because they are the perfect colour to go with my new bag because it's a slightly lighter shade obviously we looked at the difference in the colours I thought this would be lovely so that is what I'm wearing today and I'm looking forward to lunch and doing a little bit of antique shopping and garden shopping as well Olivia's just quickly run back inside to publish a Sunday vlog I think that's a little bonus video because uh, she doesn't normally post on a Sunday so I thought I would update you. I think our first stop's probably going to be Burford Garden Centre um, and then I think she said Station Mill. I'm not 100% sure, um, but we'll quickly pop in there. But the sooner we get to the farmhouse to have some lunch, the better, because I am hungry. <laughs> Don't know what we're going to eat today, um, but it's such a beautiful day. Hopefully we'll get a spot somewhere out in the sunshine. back where it all started and look at how beautiful this greenhouse is. <gasps> Possibilities of greenhouses are endless and this is so beautiful. It looks like a raw iron style. Oh, I love it. They're obviously just getting it all snazzed up. Just come to check out the artwork. It always used to be very, very contemporary in here, but it looks like now they have lots of lovely still life, which is always my favorite. Whether it's modern still life, or floral or traditional, oh, I just love it. Instead of the wood-fired hot tub, we can get the ice bath for, I reckon you could get someone to make this for cheaper than that though. And then there's a steamer, little shepherd's hut steamer. Wow, so this one is the real deal. This, this one's got, yeah, this is wood-fired barrel sauna, but it's got glass, which would be perfect for into the woodland. And look how cute and cozy it is. Oh gosh, how exciting. I don't like the oh right, okay. I wonder if you could get the other one that's like that then. What's the company? It's a baby one. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful streets in the Cotswolds. This is Burford High Street and do you know what I've always wanted to come and actually explore this high street because I bet there's so many beautiful little shops here and restaurants so I definitely think we should do that one day. Walkers, oh, that's lovely. Original Cotswold stove shop. Christmas court <laughs> and everyone's out and about. I love that the local co-op has wicker baskets outside. I feel like that says everything. <laughs> So as you can see, trestle table number three is in the boot of the car. This is to go along the side of the greenhouse. It's a lot narrower, so it means I've got a lot more space to walk down and also still pot out there. So it's a bit like a trestle table, but a almost like a um, console, table. console table, like a sideboard. Um, so it's really good, really good. Lovely and like old wood that's been used as well. And I loved that, that you were able to buy the tables. Cause this is the thing that Ali and I always joke about whenever I go places, I want to buy the display tables. <laughs> display anything. Yeah, display anything. 
and uh, but we didn't buy anything for the garden other than we got three bits I of art. Some. You got some garden shears, didn't you? Oh, shit. Really got secateurs. secateurs and then we got some artwork for the upstairs hallway which I think will be really nice when that's painted we have come to explore the kitchen gardens at the farmhouse Ali's just complimented the tulips these are like the ultimate so these you know what? we should definitely do garlic because I did garlic so much food I did garlic and you never used it no, because I, I just didn't know when to harvest it. Oh, right, okay. Well, I, I think I'm a bit late for garlic this year, but I'll have a look. Kale. Lettuce. <laughs> they've, look, they've got their marigolds to fend off bugs. Is that what they are? Marigolds, yeah. I just don't like marigolds as a flower, though. And I feel like they're trying to make them really cool, but it's just not a vibe. They're pretty. I don't like marigolds. Got nice depth. But these are lovely, these pleached. Are these pear trees? What are these? I don't they're, know if I'd say they're pleached. They are pleached. Is that because they're straight? Or? Yeah, look, they're pleached. I thought pleached meant in the air. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> lettuce. Oh, yes, it's lovely lettuce. Yeah, that's a real frothy lettuce, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They must have issues with lots of things being eaten. Yeah cauliflower it's, it's also good to come to a garden like this to be able to see like where my veg is at as well oh, yeah. Yeah. so beautiful isn't it <laughs> so these are broad beans i've not done them yet this year because yeah. you don't really use them kale oh yeah. wow is that been eaten or is that just yeah. really ugly kale had to be narrow beans Narrow beans. Next to ball beans. <laughs> You're such a no. <laughs> What's this one? Chard. Just like they've really calmed down in there. Yeah, that was really like. Uh, that, uh, yeah. Amazing. Like a rainforest. Yeah. Wow, look at that. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. See, we could easily have that in our. And that would be relatively ineffective. And with vine, uh, inexpensive. Yeah, exactly. Like even just ivy, let the ivy grow up that instead of the bloody trees. trees. <laughs> uh, are they oxenwood tables? Oh my gosh, they are, aren't they? Are they? The hidden greenhouse that looks like it's got two, three rooms. Oh, that's just about that, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's a, um, yeah. a passion fruit tree. <gasps> Wow! Oh my goodness! Oh, this oh, that's the lemon tree. That is exactly what it smelled like in my greenhouse the other day. Oh, wow! Yeah, that's really nice. That. Do you know what? If we ever got a bigger house, I would like to have two rooms like this. Oh, that's where the hot tubs are going, isn't it? So, yeah, so they're putting in like um, hot tubs and. Uh, like wood fired hot tubs, I believe, right. out the back here. Wow. This is so beautiful, though. Yeah. Goodness me. Amazing, Can you go in there? You're not allowed to go in. That's, uh, that's really doing well, though, isn't it? Oh, that smell. This is honestly, when I went into my greenhouse yesterday, that is what it smelled that's like. Flowers, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, it's the, the blossoms. The yeah. That's that's my the natural fragrance of my greenhouse now is this and it makes me so happy. I'm so glad I bought all of those lemon trees. That's a, that's a honeybee. Honeybee! It's because they got hives here, haven't they? He's well happy. Where's he going? Happy little honeybee. No. <laughs> I like this as well. This could, what is this? Because this could be a nice little thing in the house. Yeah. Little honey bumble. I can hear you. Yeah. Bumble! Very beautiful though. All their cold frames are open as well. Yeah. Sausage boys. This is the only thing that lets it down now. This uh, shed. Although, uh, the lady that comes and keeps all of our flower beds looking their best, Becca, she was like, well, for now, you could just get some plants that trail up them. And I thought, that's quite a nice idea. But we do need to get that properly designed the new trestle table i'm literally there are words i feel like there are like times in my life where there are words that i just go through 
using them all the time. Trestle table is where we're at at the moment and um, I found this one at Burford and it's thinner so it's a little bit more like a console table like I said but this will be perfect for potting. We'll put the other one into storage and actually this makes so much more sense that it's here because it's close to both the water butt and the tap so whenever I'm like watering things it'll be fine um, and then this one doesn't interrupt the vista into the woodland because this is in all honesty this is exceptional when you sit in there and you just look out it is pretty wonderful so we've done that shutting up shop out here though I'm not going to style it up and put that away just yet these puppies are living their best life Mr Mill and Gordon has our new prints that are going to go upstairs what is it like up there Lummy? I have just washed my face ready for bed and I promise I've got my pyjama top unbuttoned for a reason um, but I thought I would show you one of my other favourite pieces or products from Beauty Pie as well. This is Dr Glycolic Pore Purifying Glow Toner. You guys might remember when I first ever tried a product like this and I genuinely never thought that there would be a product better. This is by far the most incredible product. Not only is it like satisfying when you first put it on, I'm gonna put it on now with a cotton pad. It has the most satisfying, like popping candy kind of feel when you pop it on your face. You really feel it working and almost like breaking down the skin. And I find that one of the most satisfying experiences ever. Like I love it when you can feel a product actually working. So this has been one of the, the products that all of the girls are talking about in the office because obviously we've all got Beauty Pie memberships and we basically say, have you tried this? Have you tried that? We're all obsessed, okay? That's just a, that's a given. And even now I can feel it like prickling and popping on my face and oh, it just feels so good. It's kind of got an oily consistency. So what I do is I give it a good swipe over on my face and do my other bits and pieces. So this is another product which I bought this basically because of the recommendations of this product on the website. They have like before and after pictures. And this is the thing I love. It literally like, it puts you in a position where you're like, I can see it working and doing its thing. So this is something that I've actually never had in my skincare routine. This is the Beauty Pie Uber Youth Neck and Chest Super Lift Serum Spray. Well, seeing as we have a new neck and chest area, I thought this would be a good addition to my skincare routine. And also, I don't know about you, but I don't like rubbing my hands up and down my neck because I feel like that's probably not gonna be doing anything in terms of like stretching the skin. So I'd rather spray it on like this. So I just let that do its thing. Whilst this is doing its thing, I let that do its thing. And then I brush my teeth and I finish off. So I'm gonna brush my teeth. <laughs> which is probably the only thing that isn't beauty pie at the moment, but I can feel my skin just going, mm. So anyway, I'm gonna get this done. All of my other bits and pieces done, I'll probably put on one of my magnesium body butters for a good night's sleep and finish off my skincare whilst that's working away. My skin is positively tingling. Now I have two favorite serums from Beauty Pie. So I showed you this one this morning. This is the Japan Fusion and this is my other bottle because I keep it in stock. This is pretty much like my everyday. Like I know it works. I know my skin feels hydrated. I know that it stays hydrated when I've got um, like my makeup on and things like that. However, I also love the super drops, brightening and oxygenating. So this is with Oxy, Oxy, Oxy Skin and niacinamide, two things very hard to say. You know what I'm like, anything that says brightening, I love it. And the, it's always comes down to the consistencies of these, the, the general feel when you put it on your skin. It doesn't feel like your skin just soaks it all up and it's gone, but it also doesn't feel like it just sits on top of your skin and then disappears and evaporates. It feels like it soaks into your skin, but it's still working away, both of them do. So when I want to have a little bit more like oomph in terms of brightening and reviving I'll add this one to like my morning so I'll save that one to, for the morning but this will be like morning evening whenever I fancy it but 
I'm going to use my Japan Fusion this evening just because I'm feeling like my skin will want some hydration, especially after that tingliness. And I just generously apply it all over my face. And then I'll go in with like a really nice buttery moisturizer to just go over the top, but feeling very fresh. Lip balm, moisturizer, magnesium body butter, I'm going to bed. But we've had a lovely, lovely day. And actually, considering we didn't actually get like really any specific gardening products um, today, it was such a lovely day. Like the sun was shining when we got to the farmhouse. It was just like, it was so busy. It was so nice to see so many people together, enjoying themselves. And it was just lovely. And we had a lovely lunch, really, really lovely lunch. We uh, actually ended up sitting inside because it was so busy outside, but we didn't expect to get any kind of seat out there. Um, and we sat inside and it was lovely. And, um, and then we took a little stroll around the kitchen garden looking for little bits of inspo. Can't believe I've never seen that greenhouse there as well. That was so beautiful. But anyway, I'm gonna get to bed. Hopefully Lumi is going to join us and I will see you guys in the morning. Come on. Good boy. Good morning, everyone. My alfalfa sprouts are doing their most this morning. I have done 8K this morning. I was up at five and I really thought that my routine was gonna be destroyed by my weekend and like obviously going out and enjoying myself. And um, I woke up at five o'clock again today, did a 5K run and then took the boys on a 4K walk and I've just been waiting around because basically I'm trying, I wanted to try new shampoos because my hair is really, really dry after um, my holiday and I ran out of shampoo as well. So I ordered two different ones and you're probably going to think, hey, why don't you just go and buy some? But I'd ordered two different ones and one was supposed to be delivered on Sunday and it didn't arrive. And lucky for me, this is purely coincidence, my beauty buy one has arrived. So there's some bits in here that I'm going to be trying and I don't know if I can scissors to get into it I'm gonna be trying I think this is like an entire hair range I think but in the iconic pink box we have what is this what is this so this is the super healthy hair shampoo and conditioner obviously I have to be super careful with what I use on my scalp because I've got an incredibly sensitive scalp I've also got their ooh, detox shampoo purifying so that would probably be a bit drying for my hair at this moment in time um i've already got the super healthy hair repair treatment so i might try that in the shower and then i've got the nourishing shampoo sounds good oh coconut and avocado oils we've got a few more bits though i basically wanted to try the lot and just see how my hair does this is oh volume booster and smooth booster controls curls add shine and smooths and then the final one here we have super healthy hair conditioner and shampoo moisturizing shampoo for dry damaged hair i don't know which one to try nourishing shampoo let's try the nourishing shampoo and see how i get on with that but my hair is honestly so gross, but it's fine because I'm at a place now where I'm like happy just popping my hair up in a bun. Obviously not like this when I've not done it properly. I've been on a dog walk and a run, FYI. I'm gonna get myself washed and ready for the day because it's Monday. And I love me a Monday, like literally love me a Monday. So that is my hair washed and oh my gosh, how good does freshly washed hair feel? especially when you've not got a product that like coats your hair. I washed it using the nourishing uh, shampoo because that was for like exceptionally dry hair and it has worked wonders. I used a different hair mask, but loved that. It doesn't lather up like on the first wash super intensely, but on the second wash, 
which is when I go in. It did lather up really, really well, so I just kind of got in everywhere and just gave it a good wash. But freshly washed hair is a vibe. Also, this is my outfit of the day, although this morning it was so beautiful outside, like genuinely. I, it was one of those days where it's like smelling sweet in the air and it was sunny and it was mild. And it did say it was gonna cloud over and it has done. So I don't know what, what I was, I was teeing myself up there for disappointment, but this dress is from Amazon. And then I popped the linen belt from my uh, collection dress, the notch neck one. And um, I actually think that it's made it look even more elevated. I'm gonna show you it. As you can see, it's kind of given it a bit of like contrast. It does have a shirred waist, but it's not quite tight enough on me, but this is a beautiful like uh, light green gingham and I love it. I feel like gingham's having a bit of a moment at the moment. But yeah, so this is what I was gonna wear today and now it's quite cold except for up here because it always gets really nice and warm up here. Like all of the heat of the house rises and I love it. So I've been hiding away up here. Also, I haven't even shown you this. I was practically reduced to tears this morning because I opened this up, it came to my PO box and it was sent by one of the ladies that came to my meetup a couple of weeks ago now with Intimacy. And to say this is quite possibly the most beautiful book I have ever seen is an understatement. And the note that accompanied it literally just filled my heart with joy. And I'm obviously not gonna read it because it was sent, you know, to me. <laughs> But she found this book and she said that it made me think of her. It's green, it's got botanical illustrations, it's about gardening, it's an antique and it smells a little bit musty. <laughs> but obviously it's got just, like this is the thing that I think is spectacular about this book is that on lots of different pages it has the most beautiful like watercolor paintings stuck in which I'm guessing they've only tacked them in so you can probably take them out and frame them, but it tells you what they are. So this says, an ideal, ideal cottage garden. The creeper on the wall is mountain clematis or clematis. It's from a watercolor draw drawing by Charles E. Flower. And as you flick through the book, it is just full of beautiful pictures, but also, oh my gosh, it's, it's just like a treasure trove, this book. That one was a fold out, like, look at this. Oh my word so this is plans for a rose garden oh crimson with white standards in center main house door to the garden old climbed but old wall climbed by roses which is what i want to do in my garden free bushes of rambling roses and then it's got obviously a raised bed section basically all of the different elements of having a garden. So there's a section on obviously roses, which is just beautiful, a chat about roses. Pillars of blossom, rose lady gay in bright pink. Garden planning. And just all of the most beautiful. So this is a flower fringed pathway in a paved garden. Oh. Honestly, it made my day and I just thought, there is no way that I can hide that book away. I'm gonna pop that in my dressing room and it is the perfect magical plinth for my new little handbag, I think. How gorgeous does that look? I am just, and I get to look at it every day and it just means the absolute world to me, it really does. The most beautiful book, I actually can't cope. One of the other things that I wanted to talk to you about was that we were going to do today, we were going to do something quite exciting and I've been sort of umming and ahhing about how to document this or even talk about it. I mean it's really not a big deal but at the same time it's like it's only a big deal to us but obviously there's been a few videos where I've spoken about moving house <laughs> and Today we were actually going to go and view a property. We're now going on Wednesday to view the property instead in the evening, but 
it's sort of a funny one, isn't it? Because, my goodness, this is why I have my phone on silent. It's sort of a funny one because... Obviously, I've spoken to you about it on this channel and I've said how, you know, we're not going to move for years and what have you, but it is going to be a process that is going to happen. And one of the things that I've been trying to be, and I think that maybe you will probably have picked up on this, but when, you ha when you're on the internet as a person, sorry, I feel like this is actually going to be a, a, a longer chat than I probably anticipated, but when you are on the internet and... Um, you're someone like me or anybody that kind of becomes a YouTuber, you're not prepared for your channel to ever become anything. You're like, that just doesn't happen to people like me. And so when it does, it's an incredibly passively frightening thing. So you don't necessarily um, acknowledge that it's frightening, but it's there constantly and it builds and you don't necessarily know that you're frightened but you're living in a state of high alert because there's this thing that happens on the internet which I, i'm sure you would have heard of because it happens quite a lot but it's called doxing and um generally what people do is they find out um where you live especially if you're like moving house that is a thing if you if you move house um they'll find out and they'll publish your address or where it is that you live on the internet and for any normal person like that's just kind of come out of nowhere um that's that's frightening that is absolutely terrifying and i remember and i think this will probably um no i still can't bring myself to tell you what i was messaged when um my address was out there but it's it's really quite frightening and unnerving and it feels like a huge violation of your privacy and I I don't understand why it happens I genuinely don't I, I don't know whether it's like a, a, a like a, a power thing like I don't know whether people do it to be able to be like look I you know I got your secret out there or whatever because that that generally feels like a bit of a thing that happens on the internet is that people like to uncover um things about you and like shame people and and just things that maybe people want to keep private and a lot of the time one of the things that i've i see that's used as an excuse is that you shouldn't put yourself out on there out there on the internet if you don't want people to know this stuff and the one thing that i would say to that is that there are a lot of people in my family who don't put themselves out there on the internet and were never given the choice um or the respect or the the kind of understanding to um not have those kinds of things said about them or or mentioned about them on the internet and so i don't i don't think that that's strictly true because um just because they're my like mum or dad or whatever yeah so anyway, i'm totally digressing here but because that's such a big thing and obviously we're at such a even though this sort of industry has been around for like a decade now properly we're still very much in our infancy and i know that most people just grin and bear it and get on with it and and what have you or some people really struggle with the fact that that's happened and it can be quite upsetting and i know that it's happened to people recently so talking about this with you is kind of my way of the thing that i realize is that it's frightening for us but it happens to quite a lot of people in the public eye it's an issue and it, I, i'm not big enough and hard enough to solve the issue sadly i wish i was but i think that by me devoting attention to it would probably be exactly what they would want and so i obviously know that when i go to soho farmhouse i drive past a very well-known celebrity's house i know that every other day you know a well-known comedian's house on a cliff edge is photographed in summer so in that respect in the like modern day well-known people sense it is quite normal for people's addresses to be well known and so I don't want to be scared of that anymore. And I also don't want to be scared of documenting this process. And this process could take five years. It could take five years. It could take three years. It could take three months. We just don't know. But what we do know is that we are very, 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 very quickly um, approaching a stage where we need to bring on more people. And it's 
not an option for us to have any more people in our house like it just isn't and I've always said that it's not an option for us to have a, an external office either and so we need an external office on our property which we don't have here and so we we are looking at properties and it just so happens that a house cropped up that was very very intriguing to us it has kind of combined two styles actually three styles of living modern modern rustic and historical kind of um vibes and it was just very very intriguing to us and so we've decided that we are going to go and view it it is completely at the top end of our budget but we're going to go and view it and i don't want to feel like i'm hiding a secret because i really feel like i've reached this beautiful place with you all where I'm uninhibited and I'm not scared and I'm really really comfortable with accepting the internet for what it is and what happens on it and not being frightened anymore and also not letting that change me as a person because I feel like I started on YouTube just being this person that was uninhibited and absolutely fine and then when you when you are on the internet when you are online there's a unfortunately when you don't know how to be online you start absorbing everything and you become frosty and negative and defensive and sad which is where I ended up and now I know and have the tools with how to deal with everything that happens on the internet, I feel so happy. And I feel so unfazed and so not scared to just talk about the reality of my life with you and not worry about whether it's gonna take too long or what's gonna happen and how it's gonna happen and what this story is going to become and whether it will become anything, I don't know. but. We always said that if we saw a property that we were intrigued by, we would go and see it because it will help us get an understanding of where and the areas that we want to live in. But also we knew that the thing when we bought this house was we were really pressed for time because we really only looked at a handful of houses, put an offer on one, didn't get it, looked at another one, almost put an offer on it, didn't get it, didn't do it. And then we were like, okay, we have to find a house and we found this one. So we really want to be able to take our time and make sure that we've got all of our eggs in one basket. No, not all of our eggs in one basket. All of our eggs in a row, ducks in a row, whatever. Eggs or ducks? We're going to go with eggs. But all of our eggs in a row, it's ducks. <laughs> but so that we've got time and understanding. And so we are putting a sort of time limit of five years is like the longest, but... I thought it would be quite nice to d document this in a slow way and also just share lessons and heartbreak and moments of sadness and moments of happiness and maybe even moments of finding the one, who knows? And so it was really funny. Usually Ali was always Mr. Like, no, 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 we can't do anything like that. And he was very much the same as me. He, we, we were both just like, it's life. This is what life is like. You don't really know where you're going or how you're doing it or how you're navigating it, but you know where you want to end up. And so you have to make moves now to ensure that you end up as much as possible where you want to. So anyway, that's my reasoning and a bit of a chat about that and just letting you know that obviously I'm probably not gonna be able to show you around the house with me, but we are gonna go and view a property this week. Probably won't be in this video because it's a few days away. But I wanted to just have a bit of a chat and maybe explain about in the past. And like, I always said, I say to people now when they message me or if we end up talking about it and they were like, oh, my address, you know, ended up online and this, that and the other. And I always say to them like, whatever you do, unfortunately, there's nothing that can change it. But don't let this feeling and this fear and this worry steal what is a really special moment in your life because that's what I let happen. I was so scared and so worried about what was going on online and you know worried that people were going to come to my house and all of these things that I let an insane moment in my life like I'm, I was buying a house I've never lived in a house like this 
And that was like such a moment. And I looked back and I was like, I was petrified. The whole time I was petrified. And that's so sad. And so I literally say to other people, I'm like, just don't. Because the moment that you do that, and not that it's about who wins and who loses, but the people that are doing it get what they want. They want to, to steal that moment a little bit from you. And I just hope that you don't. So anyway, that's a really long, rambly, heart to heart about this. Because obviously I've been speaking about it and dropping these weird little hints and Obviously, we might end up staying here. Who knows? Life is not certain, but in a nutshell, we're at a bit of a crossroads in life where we kind of want to explore, explore other avenues. And I know one of the things that people will say is that, oh my gosh, you've done so much this house and blah, blah, blah. And we've definitely on this house, that's it, it's been good investments that we've made and it's worked in our favour. And um, so generally, you do do a house up even though this was a fairly new house, it's, I feel like we've made it better. It's absolutely magical here. So we've added value, which is great. And so if we were to sell it on, it wasn't all in vain. And so that's another thought process. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> I just thought, you know, life's funny, isn't it? And it's even funnier when you have to live it on the internet. And there is no manual to how you do this. There's no manual to how you do life, let alone life on the internet. So. In these moments, it's like, what do I do? And how do I do this right? And accepting that there is no right or wrong way to do this. You just have to do it. And if you don't, you're just going to regret it. So we're exploring and we're putting the feelers out there and we're seeing how it goes. And so we may not have this big unexpected huzzah moment that we've moved and nobody knew, but we'll have some stories that we shared in the process, hopefully. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I'm such a blooming softy. I am, I'm such a softy. <laughs> As you will remember, we, well, Mr. Mill and Gordon tried- I had never had- Little moons, well, mochi moons. Mochi balls until Maldives. Until we went to the Maldives. And so, I didn't even know you could get them. Now we're gonna have- And now we're having an ice cream party, aren't we? So I ordered these on our Waitrose shop. Um, this one is a vegan ice cream. Um, these sadly aren't vegan, so I'll probably be unwell, but hopefully they will end up doing vegan little moons because that would make me very happy. But this one is one in cookie dough. So I'm excited to try that. We're just having a bit of a finish off of ice cream and a little moon party, aren't we? So I've gone for creamy coconut, chocolate chip and Himalayan salted caramel. Lids. Mm. A little cheeky watchy ball delivery. This is my one. It is. So you've gone through the flavours haven't you? No. Oh yeah I have. Are you vlogging for me? Well, I'm holding the vlogging camera oh, up. Thanks. Yeah. I'm not filming that. I'm just holding it up at you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I get stuck on TikTok watching those Johnny Depp videos and it's like you're nosy just imagine if it was your life honestly I genuinely like it's it, me and Fee were saying it today it feels so weird that this whole thing is publicized like why but oh, it's, it's not in the UK it's not even like it's in the in I think the, the verdict's like fine but all of the intricate details yeah, are not necessary yeah I need to know that she pooped in his bed no <laughs> it's, it's imagine if it was us I know, imagine if and we were exposed we were exposing <laughs> one another the things that we could say about each other <laughs> and everyone gets to listen it's not nice. No, it's horrible. I wouldn't want to be in their position. No, me Anyway, either. eat your okay. mochi balls. Which one should I go for first? Have you had yours? No, no, so come on, be what quick. You Can you imagine if you had to expose your in <laughs> intimate details? Oh, you missed yeah, it. I did miss it, yeah. He'll be, be back. You're humping your brother. Daddy tried to put it on the internet. Puppy revenge porn. He's just seen, seen his moment. He seized his moment. Barkley, come on. I know you're coming of age. That's all it is. Off. Mummy's cushions. What makes me laugh is, is the fact Porter's that Porter's just, just absolutely. Oh, exactly. But do you remember yeah. that's what he used to do to Bart to, to Bolly? Yeah. Um, it's literally like he's just not faced. No. Ooh, he's like you crack this on. He's got a good stodgy exterior. Need a knife and fork. Good. 
Go I'm going to get mine. Right, you two, behave you, please, because I'm coming in here. Goodness me, I am very bleary eyed, and it is half nine. <laughs> we are getting ready for bed, but we had our little um, ice cream ball party in the living room, and I have to say, I've had a poorly tummy all evening. But the best news is that my favourites, genuinely, out of all of them, and I feel like I've never heard of these before. I just, I just saw them on uh, Waitrose, are these, the Dochi. So these are vegan chocolate chip, premium vegan vanilla frozen dessert wrapped in, wait, I've read that completely wrong. It's premium vegan vanilla frozen dessert wrapped in vegan chocolate chip cookie dough. They are vegan and gluten free and they come in boxes of six and it says that they're new from the London Dough Company. And seriously, these are the best thing ever. Like it is literal cookie dough around vegan ice cream. So no issues with the ice cream and no issues with the um, gluten either. And they taste unbelievable. Like genuinely the best things ever. So I'm just gonna treat the dogs because they've gone out for their nighttime toilets. Look at you. Look at you! In you come. Little treat for you. And a little... No, Barkley. No. No, that's Porter's. There you go. If you're not having it, my boy. You really need to learn to share. Is it time to tuck you in? Yes, it's time to tuck you both in. Yes, it is. Oh, you should be your dummy. Let's tuck you in, toys away, and let's wrap you up so you're nice and warm. And you, potty, in your bed. Come on, little, in your bed. In your bed. What can you shift? No, not getting in your bed yet. You're not ready for bed? And you're eating one of the flies. Good boy. Good boy. Good night. Good night. Mm-hmm. <laughs>